Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thursday night, first Thursday of the month. I am trying to get some washi tape off of here to tape my paper down. Um, so let me know when you're here. Let me get over to comments and um, just, you know, sound check. Make sure everything's good. You can hear me. I'm not echoey. All the right things. So yeah, if you're new here, ah, this washi tape, it's killing me. I haven't, it's really old. I guess it does go bad, but it won't even peel off the roll very nicely. Um, but yeah, if you're new here, I am Tony Tesler, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, Tony Stamps. Hey, Sue, all good? Okay, this washi tape might just go in the garbage. Ugh. So every month I do a virtual workshop, which is online. I'm going to go through all the um, five different projects, cards, all cards this time. Um, sometimes I mix it up and do something else in there. Hey, Sean, good. All good. Um, but you are welcome to follow along, copy using your own stuff. Um, if you would like the um, make and take kit, which is, you know, the materials to make one of everything that I'm making tonight. That's when you use this code down here. Um, T-A-Z-Y-T-E-R-G. Tazy Turg. That's good. Um, all month. Yeah, this washi tape is... Uh-uh. Not doing it. All right. In the garbage. Um, that is good through the end of March. $75 purchase gets you the make and take kit and a freebie. Um, this month, assuming we don't have inventory issues, it's going to be these... Uh, enamel essentials dots so these are in night of navy crumb cake and white and i am using them on all four hey deb um no yeah four out of the five projects so yeah welcome um likes hearts loves shares subscribes all those things appreciated i do all kinds of stuff if you're not familiar with me um cards mini books scrapbooks um journals 3D things like boxes, like I like all of it. Anything out of paper that we can make, uh, I'm into it. So um, let's do a couple of announcements and then we'll get things going. Um, first of all, online exclusives went online yesterday for sale. Um, I wasn't the only one, the only demonstrator that didn't realize this, that there was more products included in the online exclusives sale than we knew about it. Hey, Julie. Hey, Di. Hi, Marsha. So, yeah, we thought it was just all the stuff that we could pre-order. Like, um, you know, there was a stamp set, a bundle, like dies, paper, doodads, you know, some little stuff. Well, there's even more. So you really need to go online, stampinup.com. And it's like the first thing when you get on the website, online exclusives, shop here. So click that button and you'll see all the stuff that's available. Um, oh, thanks, Di. Uh, so just more than I expected. Um, the other thing yesterday, we were supposed to have news on the colors that are changing and all they posted was, we're not going to tell you what colors are changing yet. So tune back in at, on March 29th. So I know it's because of the retirement list coming out and they don't want people to rush to get stuff now and mess up with their inventory. So the message is whatever your favorite colors are, Get your reinkers, get your paper, get all that stuff now before they announce it because then stuff will go like hotcakes. And especially with the ink colors, you know, we know the 2021 through 2023 ink colors are going away this year. Um, we don't know if any of them are coming back into the fold of the regular colors. I am parched tonight. I don't know what's up. Um, I think it's because I've been sneezing and blowing my nose all day. So, um, yeah, colors, get them now. We'll have more news later this month on which colors are actually coming back. Um, so get your favorites now. Um, another thing I noticed in the, uh, online exclusives now is two of the circle punches are back. So one and three quarters and two inch circle punches. So if you don't have those, Hey Gail, if you don't have those, um, they're very handy. I still have mine and I still use them from when I bought them however many hundred years ago. Uh, I, you know, my punches, I will keep them till they, 
I, I think I've only had one punch that actually broke in 20 some years. And I think there was something wrong and I just never sent it back. But otherwise I've been using all my punches like forever. So yeah, circle punches, they're very um, handy to have, especially that size when you need a little something layered for your cards, one and three quarters inch. Um, that's a good size for, to put greetings in. So if you don't have them, go look at it. Um, what's else? Oh, drawing. So remember I've got two stamp sets. Um, so I got another one. I got this scenic garden. This was a hostess set hostess only for celebration. So you had to have a party $300 or more to get it. Well, I ended up with two more of these things. So we're giving them away and, um, let's do that. All right. And then we'll get into our workshop, which tonight I'm featuring, um, the queen bee bundle which the dies we cannot get until later in March, but hopefully if you're just playing along, you can use any bee, any dragonfly, any butterfly, um, anything else that you have. All right, let's go down here. So let's first look at this card I got from my upline. I thought that was very cool. This is the gold shimmer paper, which we're actually using tonight. I love this. So since the clover punch went out, um, you know, out of stock, unavailable, we can still make our own shamrocks with heart punches, you know, or dies, whatever. But I love this. This is the country bouquet punch, which is still not available, <laughs> but any two different size hearts that you have will do. But this is in garden green and gold, and I love it. And then she did one of these gold sequins and then put a little rhinestone in the middle too. So I thought that was awesome. So thanks, Jill. All right. So that's that. Um, and this, I just had to show you this nuts and bolts went on the clearance rack. I think it's still available. I'm not sure, but you know, I play in that, um, craft roulette on Friday nights. Well, it airs on Friday nights and then you have like all weekend to make your stuff and submit it. Well, robot has been on the either random or element. I forget which category or parameter for a long time. And it's actually come up several times and I have one robot set and then I've got some star Wars stuff. But when this one went on clearance, I was like, come on meow for like $13. I gotta have it. So I'm excited about that. Now I hope we get more robots over on crash roulette. <laughs> All right. So let's do, um, and I put everybody's name in, even that ordered like paper pumpkin and um, the Super Bowl orders. So we're going to do drawings for two of these scenic garden sets. All right. And oops, I need post-it notes so we can write down our winners. Um, all right. So first one, Linda H. Awesome. Very convenient because I have to send you a packet anyway. So cool. Awesome. Awesome. I hope you like this and we'll use it. And then our second one. Oh, I had two in there. Viv. Awesome. Viv is, she gets the paper pumpkin kit. Um, so awesome. So I'll have to tag you and let you know and get that out to you. Okay. Now I just realized I don't have any post-it notes, so I hope I don't need any today. Um, something seemed like it went really dark over here. Is that just me? I don't know. Okay. So on to a uh, workshop. So we're using Queen Bee and the dies. So some of the things that I'm making are only involving the dies and everything will be cut for you. If I am stamping the B, um, I may, you know, I'm going to die cut mine. You're going to stamp whatever you, you're going to use. And you're either going to die cut your own or punch your own. You know, you may not be using the same set. Mm. Sorry, my mouth. So I really, when I looked at this in the catalog, I liked it because it was a nice big B. But then when I look closer and I realized that there's like flowers and this is like very, it seems very vintage, vintagey to me. So then I liked it even more. And I like this little crown. Um, and this always good for like some, you know, collage type stamping. So I love it. And then the dies come with the big B, 
flower, some little pieces, some little honeycomb bits, little bees. These flowers that actually die cut some texture with it. We're going to use that. Hey, Marlene. And a nice label, nice size label. So let's get to it. So everything that I am using will be in your card kit. Um, you know, all the paper and stuff, paper bits and ribbon, if that's the case. So, yeah, I really need some tape. Ugh. So once again, um, freebie for this month, $75 order with the code is these enamel dot essentials knight of navy crumb cake and white all right so let's get that so our first one i wanted something really bright and not hi deborah bright and not um like a traditional you know b card so what i've done um and i'm using i realized i'm using five different embossing folders for these cards it, not all on one card let me clarify that. But I've got these basics that I labeled one, two, and three. These are part of the online exclusive sale. This comes, it's a set of three folders now, $30 for these three. And I just labeled them one, two, three. You could label them however you want. I'm also using the hive folder. Had to, bees, right? Painted texture, just because I like it. All right, so our first card... I wanted something fun and to use flower paper and to add flowers. So does anybody recognize this paper? I will give you a minute. Think about it and post, and then I will go over here. And I just realized I need a piece of white for the inside. Um, but our card base, Daffodil Delight, five and a half by eight and a half. Score in half at four and a quarter. And you're just going to have to imagine that I have a piece of white for the inside, four by five and a quarter. Okay. Then I've got another Daffodil Delight. This is four by five and a quarter. And we're just going to glue this. This has been embossed with what I call basics number two with this folder. It's kind of like a crosshatch pattern. So Marlene, you forgot to put them on your last celebration order. What's that? Oh, so this paper, nobody guessed. So this paper is from Hues of Happiness. So this is from the annual catalog. And this was that really pretty all floral print. So everybody's going to get a die cut. So you see here, I only die cut what I needed. Um, it's going to have some yellow in it, no matter where I cut your piece from. All right, And I've got another whole one anyway to go. And if you don't like that side, you can use the rainbow side on the back. This is rainbow X's. Um, but I thought that would be cool just to cut the bee out of that. A different way to add some floral. Um, but let's glue this on first. Let me get my glue. And I may have, oh, this one's open. Now your piece will be cut and embossed. Your um, Daffodil Delight. So anything will be punched, cut, embossed. The only thing I'm not doing is like the die cutting for the actual B. Because again, if you're not using this B bundle, um, you're going to need to use whatever you have. All right. So I die cut the B and I also die cut a piece of white. And that is just to make it a little bit more sturdy. So we're just going to glue these together. Now, I don't usually look at other people's cards when I'm trying to design something. So, um, but I think these are kind of different from what you may find. At least I hope so. Now, probably next week, I'll go through Pinterest and hunt for Queen Bee stuff and see what's out there that other people have done. I just don't like to feel, um, you know, if I think of something later, then I don't know. Like, oh, was that my idea or was that somebody else's? I can't remember. I mean, not that it's a big deal anyway. Casing's a good deal, right? All right, so we've got our B shape. And I don't feel like we need to stamp the B on it. I just like having that shape. Like, we know it's a flying critter of some kind, right? And that's all. That's all we need. Um, then, flowers. You're going to have... Oops. I don't want to drop these. You're going to have six different flowers um, for 
those two dies that I showed you, colors that are in whatever pattern you end up with other than yellow, because that would be just like too much yellow. So I tried to pull out like, this is uh, pale papaya. And I thought it kind of went with something over here. And then this was flirty flamingo that kind of goes over there. I think I could have gone melon mambo, but this is what I ended up with. Oh, thanks, Penny. I'm a good different. <laughs> mm. I may run out of water tonight. All right. So we're just going to use, and you can use all or as few of these flowers as you want, but you're going to get six different ones, two colors. And then we've got our label piece. So, oh, oops. And muy important. Um, we've got vellum that I die cut the little wings out of. So if you want to put this on, put it on. If you don't, then leave it off. But I want to put it with just a glue dot right in the middle because I want the wings to kind of like uh, stand up. So they're in flight, really. So I'm going to put the this right on my vellum. And yes, I'm going to be able to see through it. Um, but hopefully this busy floral pattern is busy enough that it'll hide it. All right, just trying to get that like centered. Now you can fluff them up a little bit if you want, but I like it. And that's all we really need. I guess I could have done two glue dots, but that's okay. All right, we're going to pop him up in a minute. Um, I want to get to this label. So I want you to pick a color that stands out in here. So I'm thinking either green or melon mambo. So for this one, I'm thinking green and we're going to stamp um, something on here. I like the birthday. Happy and birthday will fit. You could also pick something from a different set. Um, all right. So let me get this. So what I'm going to do is put these kind of close together, like laying them down first, because I want to stamp them all together. All right, let me do that. And then I'm just going to check and see, like, does this look straight? Straight-ish. All right, that looks good. I'm going to do Melon Mambo, I think. Oh, I can't make up my mind about the green because I really think that's garden green and granny apple green. Oh, you know what? We should just check the paper. Duh. Coastal Cabana, Fresh Frasia, granny apple green. Uh-huh. Mossy Meadow. Mmm. I don't know about that. All right. We're going to go with granny apple green. Yeah, Marlene Green. I agree. All right, so first I want to check. I know this is going to fit, but I kind of want to see if it's going to be straight. Oh, whoopsie. I heard something move. Oh, found some dimensionals. Oh, I need my notepad. Okay. All right, so just a notepad that I don't even know what these measurements are for. Um, I am doing, trying to get it on the line. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Okay. So that to me is close enough to perfectly straight. That Y could maybe come down a hair close enough. All right. So, and if I mess up, I'll flip it over. All right. Let's hope for the best here, ladies. Okay. Perfect. I love it. All right. I'm going to leave those here. Um, on the stamp because I actually need that later. Nice. All right. That really worked out. So now um, I want to add a little bit of ribbon behind here and you'll get, you know, a length of this. I'm thinking maybe that much. I just want to like swirl it behind here. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to use, and then our B is going to go over it. Okay. So wherever I put adhesive, is going to get covered up. So use a strong adhesive. This is fast fuse that we used to sell. Um, mm, that is really ripping up my embossed paper. That's stronger than I thought. All right, I got to fix this. 
So sometimes your tape will run off the side there. Um, let me do this. Okay, that's all back straight. Shoo! All right, so what I want to do is just kind of like swirl this around. I usually call it like a swoopy loopy. Just so there is something to break up all that yellow. And then I'm putting that right there with dimensionals. Lots of dimensionals. And then we're going to add some flowers and our greeting and some of our dots. Now, if you don't have these dots, um, use, you know, rhinestones, whatever. We're going to use the white ones on this one. I was thinking um, I'm going to use them as centers, the flower centers. Oh, I really like that. Love it, love it. And I think I'm going to put one right there, too. All right, and then I want this greeting. Um, I want that popped up as well. And then the flowers are probably going to be straight, flat down. Maybe pop one of them up. Ooh, my dimensional does not want to come unstuck from the back. Okay, there we go. All right, and mm, so yeah, when you have your dimensionals, cut all the bits around the edges and use those. do this kind of close and I want it tucked under there just a little bit. Ooh, I like it. All right, now let's add some flowers. See, so yeah, I'm just going to glue these down flat. So you see this one, all you need is a greeting because I'm doing the die cutting for you. Nice. And then I'll do a big one down here. And then a little one up here. Kind of how I situate my um, rhinestones. Ooh, I like that. Okay. I could add more. I think I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, but I want to come in and add a little bit of glue. Even though these dots are self-adhesive, um, especially on something that's like got a little bit of embossing on it. I just don't trust it. So a little extra glue will not hurt anyone. And it looks like there's three different sizes, tiny, two rows of medium, and then one big. So let's use the tiny ones on the small flower. Man, that really is tiny. All right, and then mediums for these other flowers. Ooh, I like that. Now, oops, that glue's not dry. So don't worry that my glue is a mess and that you can see it. Once it dries, it'll be gone. Don't worry. This is that the Barely Art Glue, and it dries clear. Oops. A lot of oopsies. All right, and then one more. Let's put right in the middle. We're going to do a big one on that vellum. And I know that is going to take a little bit longer to dry um, just because it's vellum. Ooh. I love it. Ugh. You know what else we could do if it's not too much shimmery is put um, Winkostella on that vellum. Oh, yeah. All right. I did finally get my new um, Winkostella marker, but I'm all about getting every last drop out of this one. All right. Ooh, yeah. I like that. So can you guys see any of that shimmer on the vellum? I think it might show up a little bit. And if you don't like it, um, leave it off. <laughs> it's, it's totally acceptable. All right. 
get this cleaned up. So that's our first card. So you're going to get all the bits for that, plus white for the inside and your envelope. And everything comes like cut and folded and stored in your envelope. All right, let's do that. Lay that over there. Um, next, I need to move some of this stuff. So I wanted for the next one kind of a vintagey look, um, but not necessarily pinks. So a lot of times when we see vintage, we'll see like crumb cake and um, petal pink, um, sometimes maybe purple or something. And I thought, well, I want to do something different. And I wanted to use these country gingham papers. So we're doing mint macaron. All right. Crumb cake and mint macaron. These are our focal colors. Now, um, you have envelopes for all of them, but I just want to show you this one in particular. So the country gingham comes in six by six. I'm cutting it down to the pieces that we need. And this big piece that's left over is what you can do to add to your envelope. All right. So what I do, this is going to, I can't put glue right here, but I can put it all over here. And pretty close down there. And you'll decide which um, you'll always have. I don't know what will be on the back. You'll either have this gingham or like this pattern, but it'll be mint macaron. All right. Now let's butt these up on the table and then fold up so they all line up along this edge. Okay. So this is how I would use that extra bit. And if you don't want to do it, just use it on a different card, but it'll be in your kit. All right. So you'll have all the bit leftovers after I cut this six by six piece. Now these, I just cut straight up. I don't worry about angling it because I just cut the front of it off anyway. So it'll just be like a flat, flat, um, flap straight rather not curved. But all right, so that's how I'm going to deal with that envelope. Now let's get to the card bits. So we've got a crumb cake base, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Um, then we've got very vanilla. This is for the inside, four by five and a quarter. Now, even though uh, the country gingham, the prints are all these colors with white, we're going to um, ink blend this and it's not going to be white. We're going to put some crumb cake on it and actually we're going to do the envelope too. All right, put that in there. Then we've got mint macaron that I believe is four by five and a quarter. Let me double check that. Yep, four by five and a quarter. And then I cut this one down just an eighth of an inch. So three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And we're going to do some stamping on this before we layer it on here. All right. Then we've got a square. This is a three by three square of mint macaron. This is what you're going to stamp and cut out whatever critter you want, whether it's the bee, whether it's a dragonfly, whether it's a ladybug, like whatever you have. All right. So three by three of that. And I already stamped and cut mine. Um, I was going to go with early espresso, but I just re-inked that. And none of the detail is in this, like on the body, because it's so inky. So I did it over again in um, soft suede. So we'll see which one I like better. I think I'm going to go with the soft suede. Uh, but that's your piece for that. Then we have two pieces of crumb cake. The first one is two and a half by two and a half. And this is embossed with the basics. I called it the basics number three folder, the, um, the dots. How long do you cut the card base die? Um, this is five and a half by eight and a half. So I take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and cut it right in half at five and a half. So it would really be, um, eight and a half by 11. So cut the 11 in half that, that gives us five and a half by eight and a half and then fold it. Is that what you mean? Some people like their card bases, um, a top fold. And so you can do it, you can cut it four and a quarter by 11 and then fold it in half that way. And those are the ones that, you know, the, the fold is up top here. 
that's just not my favorite. So I don't do that style a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, so this two and five, two and a half, two and five eighths. And these are just going to get layered together. Um, but I'm going to leave this because I might want to ink blend some. So, um, oh, and then this little bit is left over from the six by six that I cut up. So if we want to put this on the inside, we can do that, you know, whatever. Then you'll also have a little scrap to um, stamp a sentiment. And I should have had a little pin in here uh, for this one. A little teeny tiny little scrap of very vanilla too. Oh, here we go. And one of these, uh, I think they're called bulb pins. So you're going to have one of these. I have a bunch of um, different colors, but I do want to color this one. This is silver and I want it to be more brown. So I'm going to put a, um, a stamp and blend on it, but let's do our stamping on this one. So I want uh, crumb cake and mint macaron and soft suede. So there's going to be some stamping and then some ink blending. All right, let's get this out of the way. So I want to do my biggest images first and I definitely want this flowery bit and I hope I have a big enough block I should I'm gonna need this later oh you know what I just realized I need a water pen I got plenty here all right um so this I want to do just tone on tone so I want this to be Like here doesn't have to be up and down, but um, that's mostly what I'm going to do with this because I want all my flowers going the right direction. Maybe a little bit there. All right, and I do need to clean these as I go. because I'm going to need that flower stamp, I think, for uh, card number four. All right. Now, whatever, um, like, collage vintage images you want to put on here. All right. Then I want uh, this. These words, I think, are really good for the image. And I kind of want to make sure they're a little bit straight because there's some like things that look like words in there. And this will be in crumb cake. And then mm -mm -mm, there's little speckles, teeny tiny little speckles. Um, but I think I'm going to do a couple of the crowns and the little flower. And these are very teeny tiny. So when I put the stickers on my flower, I couldn't tell uh, what was the good side or not. So I'm sure that label does not match. But that's okay. All right. So we'll do add a few little flowers. And I do want to keep in mind that, like, I'm going to have some of this covered up, right? So, hmm, I can probably go back and put that a little higher. But I want some, some bits hanging out. And then let's do another flower, maybe right there. right there peeking out over okay I think that's enough um, so I want to do some ink blending yeah that's so su suede is very juicy too I went through the other day and rejuiced re-inked uh, a bunch of my ink pads And it seems like after I do that, then they're like super juicy. All right. Now, before I ink blend, 
let's address this pin because I want to put some stamp and blend marker on this and then let it sit. Oh, so I want a very dark brown one. I'm going to go with SU100. This is one of the um, like natural tones browns, but I think there's bronze. Um, there's a couple of different choices. All right, so I'm just going to take the big end and just color it. You can barely see the difference. I mean, in real life, I can see it changing from silver to, to brown. I know that's not going to come up on the, the camera. Maybe that does. Oops. Oh, oh, maybe this. Okay. And then we can see it silver and then, and then it's brown. So if you don't want to do that, don't. Um, but I figure why not? These pins you get at Joann's in the sewing section. Um, and they're very cheap. They come in a multi-pack or like all silver, but as we see, you can color them. So, all right, let's glue this down. Um, oh no, wait, I didn't want to do that because I might want to ink blend that. All right, we need brushes. So brown, and I only have one for brown, so I'm going to use crumb cake first. And you could tell the good, the new color, good. Oh, thanks, Penny, for writing that down. I love it. Um, so I'm going to start with crumb cake because I'm going to go all over this and, you know, so it's not like the white pattern, white on mint macaron looks more vintagey. And then I'll go around the edges with, um, the soft suede. All right. So this is just to like muddy it up. I like that. Now remember that little piece. I want to do this too, because I'm going to put that on the inside of my card. And I want it to have the same look. Now, if I thought about it, I should have stamped some stuff on this little strip too, but that didn't happen. Um, then I want to bring in my envelope. So I get that the same treatment. So I get that edge and then open it up so I don't get ink blending over here. And there we go. Nice. Okay, enough with the crumb cake. Now, soft suede. And I'm trying not to um, shake the table so much, but I think when I'm doing this ink blending, it's kind of hard not to, you know? All right, let's get this. I like it. So I do like uh, pink and crumb cake, but I like any color and crumb cake. And I think it's vintagey looking. Ooh, yeah. I like that. All right. So again, you're going to stamp and die cut your bee, your bug, whatever out of this mint macaron. But since I already did it, we're going to just file that piece. Um, all right. Let's do some gluing and then we're going to do our label. And we're going to use a little piece of um, vintage lace that I forgot to get out. Well, not vintage. It was like old trim called Victorian or something. But I still have it. Any lace you have will work. All right. So we're going to mount this. And again, this has a teeny tiny border. Eighth of an inch. I usually like three sixteenths, but I don't always do what uh, my favorites are. We need variety, right? All right, let's get this down. Oh yeah, this is coming together. I like it. Okay. Now I want the edges to stand out of this one. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit with the soft suede. Actually, this whole thing can stand out because then that's really going to make the, the dots show up. Ooh, yeah. I like that. All right. Cool. Let's 
So we're going to layer this. Oh, I like it. I'm kind of wondering if I need to ink blend the other one too, the bottom layer. Yeah, let's do it. Which you may think, well, why didn't you just use early espresso paper? Well, that would be like darker than I want, like too dark. This is the just right version. Okay. Nice. All right. And then I'll wipe this on my chamois later. I don't think I'm going to be using any ink blending, any other ink blending tonight. Oh, I really like this. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Ooh, I like it. Okay. Now this I'm going to do like straight in the middle, middle-ish. All right. There's that. And I want my B popped up. Um, that's not the one I wanted. Hey, where'd it go? Oh, under my glue. Jeez. Ooh, I really like it. Okay. I need dimensionals. Mm -mm -mm. I just had some. And then I need another drink of water. All right. Now, see how I messed up? And that was some stamping mess up. But, you know, there's two sides to a piece of paper. I mess up too. Creative opportunities, right? All right. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, I didn't want to just do like black and yellow bees. I wanted um, something uh, a little bit different. All right, I like that. And he can hang over a little bit on that side. Ooh, I like it. Okay, now you've got, you're going to have these two bits. So you can stamp whatever you want on them. I wanted to go with this beloved, I just thought that was interesting and very teeny tiny. Um, and then I wanted to put something like just images or something on this crumb cake piece. And then we'll see what we're doing. All right, beloved, that's not straight, but that's okay. And then maybe a, I'm going to hand cut this little guy out and rip it, trim this down a little bit. This might be a little bit putsy for, but I'm liking it. Oh, and I need a poker. All right. I need a tiny little, I gotta move, sorry. Oh, well, you can't tell this anyway. I'm moving my other camera. So, the hole puncher I have is um, bigger than I wanted, but that's okay. I have an eighth inch. I thought I had the teeny tiny 16th inch one, um, but we're gonna make it work, okay. Everything's good. Um, trim this out real quick. And I'm not leaving a ton of edge around here. And if you didn't want to do this part, obviously don't. Stamp your greeting, add it. I just thought it added a little bit extra vintagey business to it. All right, we've got our crown. I'm gonna glue that on. And I'm running over, definitely over. I'm supposed to cook dinner tonight because since the hubby's sick. Um, but it's gonna, it's gonna wait, All right? All right, let's do this flower, a little bit flower. Mm -hmm. 
just to get that on there. I'm just building a little teeny tiny layered tag. Oh, I really like that. I feel like I need a little something else. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Punch a hole here. And hope this comes off. I don't want to wreck my fingernails. There we go. And then I'm going to punch a hole here. And I want these to go together. Um, mm, I like it. But I want this ripped. And I want this ripped. No, trim this. Make up your mind. All right. So I want the illusion that they're like going to be floating, but I really want to attach this because I don't want it just dancing around. So I'm just going to line up these. And if I decide I want to trim this later, I'll trim it. Ooh, I like it. Okay. So our little hat's going to go on here. I need a mini dimensional for that one. And I know I just had my minis. And I better put two just because they're tiny. Oh, I like it. All right, now our pin. Just want to attach this. And then I've got to uh, get the lace trim that I want. That I've kept because I love it. Oh, this stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing that's bugged me in this catalog, this current one, is that we don't have any lace, right? I like it for a little bit of something. Um, so this is from a year or two ago. Very vanilla scallop lace trim, but I think it's really pretty. So I just want to, you know, take a little piece, fold it in half, cut it. And actually, I want to put this on first and then our tag. So I'm just going to stab this through on the pin. Okay. And then this. And if we had beads or something, um, just do that. Close this. And I like it. Now we could, I could have added this, like poked a hole in this and added it right there it's too late to drag that up though um because that would have been better but for now i'm just going to glue dot this on here and i want it just to hang just like that so glue dots to the rescue but you see what i mean it would be better if i had poked a hole there we're gonna make do all right let's put that right there and then I will add just another glue dot, like right under that part. So then it's like faux. Um, people don't have to know that it won't move, but mm, I love that. And then I wanted to finish with um, a couple of these uh, crumb cake dies. So see how that's all attached and then the lace like hanging down. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's add a few dots. Let's put one right there. And then we'll do a couple up here. And that'll be good. And I want the crumb cake ones. Let's do a medium one. Small one and a big one. These tiny ones are really tiny. Oh my God. Let's look at that. They usually give this, these measurements in metric, which doesn't, I can't tell. So this is like, um, an eighth of an inch. It just seems smaller. All right. And then big one. And then this kind of plays off the dots from the embossing folder too. But so that is, um, that is only card number two. <laughs> Sorry. 
<coughs> Sometimes these are, um, they go a lot quicker in my head. <laughs> All right, hang in there. Okay, our next one is going to be a landscape, um, landscape easel card in Knight of Navy, because we're going to use some of these navy dots now. Let's get this stuff out of the way. And that, actually this little bit of that tape is stuck. Oh, and I forgot to put this in. I would put this on the inside somewhere of this card. Probably like near the bottom. Right down there. Oops, out of camera. But I'll add that later. Okay, so landscape easel cards. So landscape meaning um, it'll be this way. So again, starting with a five and a half by eight and a half piece of paper. Oh, thanks, Gail. Thanks, Penny. Um, this time scored at four and a quarter and then at two and one eighth, which is half of four and a quarter. So I want it to fold this way. Okay, this will be our base. And then with an easel card, we need this part to stand up. So I'm going to fold that too. So at two and an eighth. Okay, that's going to be like that. Then we've got another piece of Knight of Navy. This is four and a quarter by five and a half because what we need to do is flatten this out. We're going to put glue just on this bottom half. And then this is going to go right directly on it. So I want it to cover the entire card. All right. And actually, let's just do that right now. Okay. Squeeze that. Then you've got a piece. This is where I brought in the painted textures folder. This is four by five and a quarter, and that's going to go right on top. And just going to center that. All right. Then we have a piece of basic white for the inside, four by five and a quarter. And it's a good thing I already did my um, heat embossing. I was going to show you guys that, but I do. I am. Uh, I got to cut some time. All right. You will have two pieces. This is the shimmer paper. These are two by two squares and see how they're white on the back. And then this soft shimmery gold, it comes in a pack with gold, um, fresh freesia and soft succulent. And they're so pretty. Um, but you've got two by two squares at, that are already going to be embossed. The trick you have to remember when you're using this hive folder is if you want your dots to go in or push up. And if you're really going for that hive effect, you want them to go in. Um, but I thought we would, and if you want to rip these, you can rip them. But I thought two inch squares, you can do what you want with them. I wanted to just glue them here, like at angles. Um, then you're going to have a piece that's roughly, I think it's three by four or, um, two and three quarters by four and a quarter. That's weird. I'll probably make that three by four and a quarter. What I want you to do, and this has a notched on it. So whenever you get a piece in my kits that have the notched corner, that means you're going to stamp something on here and either cut it out, punch it out, die cut it, you know, whatever. Um, so what I want you to stamp and gold emboss on here, gold embossing powder is your B or whatever creature you're doing. And then the words, I wanted happy birthday and I stamped them and then cut them separate. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to go through that. I really should, but, um, and we'll, we'll do embossing another time. So let's just glue this down. Um, and then we're going to need a bit for the inside to actually hold our easel up. All right. And I'll show you what I mean. And it's okay if these edges um, pop up some. That's good. Actually, let's crinkle them a little bit. Why not give them a little extra wear and tear? All right. Hold 
that. And I'm actually going to use my black dimensionals on this just because it's darker and I don't want it. I'm just holding this in place. I don't want those white dimensionals to stand out like on the sides. Mm. I love night and navy and gold together. I really like it with copper too, um, but we don't have any copper um, paper. Now this, I do want him to be like right in the middle, but I'm just eyeballing this um, like that. Okay. And then I'm going to do happy birthday and I'm going to pop those up. Um, now I have used, so these black dimensionals come in a pack where there's half of them are tiny ones and half of them are regular size. And for this particular pack, I think I've already used all the tiny ones and I need a thinner. So I'm going to have to use this line of, um, and where'd my scissors go? Right here. All right. So I'm going to do that. That'll work. And then that. And then we'll do this inside bit that the easel needs to stay propped up. You have to have something that stands up. All right, let's do this. And right here. Oh, I like that. And I do want some... Um, some dots. So let's put these on. Let's do little ones. I guess the crumb cake ones would be good too, but I wanted the blue. Let's do a big one. Let's see, can I get these with my finger? Okay, that's going to work. Oop, until I land it right in the glue. Jeez. All right. No, I need my pickup tool. All right. And then we'll do another little one. Or another medium. And then a little one. Okay. I like it. Odd number all over the place. Down with it. Okay, then you have two more pieces in your kit. So this is a five and a half. They're both five and a half inches wide because I want it to go over the whole, across the whole thing. So this is three quarters inch and then this will be a half inch of white. So with an easel card, we need it to catch on something so that it will stay up, so it'll stay propped up. So I like to put something like about two thirds of the way down, which is about here. Um, so what I was going thinking was this long, whatever this is, chain, and I'm going to try to, uh, I need to angle that. Okay. I'm going to try to get it straight and do it twice, but if it's not perfect, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to start off, and sorry if my head got in the way. Oop, off to a good start. Now I just want to try to line this up with this side. Okay, I'm okay with that. Now this blue ink seems to take a little bit to dry. Um... Oh, and I just realized I need to get my watercolor pencils after I'm done. I just have to get up and, all right, get them. So let's glue this on. I'm just going to layer this right on here. Now you can put whatever you want on this white strip. The important part is... We stamp it and then we have to pop it up. So just to lay it on here flat is not enough height. We need some extra height. So this is where 
if you have some foam tape, it's going to come in handy. And that's perfect, the, the right width. I think this is a quarter inch. So let me do a little... A little glue right down the middle and trim and I just realized um, I would have been fine putting this down directly I need the glue on the foam for when I go to put it on the card so it's just going to be extra wiggly from both sides, but that's okay. All right, now we're going to put this down. And like I said, I like to go about two thirds down. Um, and this is going to stretch across the whole card. There we go. And I'm going to have to go back and trim that off later. But as you can see, I already smudged my finger in it a little bit, like right there. Boop. So, all right, so our card will mail like this, and then when you get it, it'll sit up like that. Like, oh, I love it. If I'd had another strip of gold, um, but yeah, I didn't want to waste that shimmer paper on that. And this, I like it. So then you can write some message, some part of your message up here where they can't see it. And then, love, Tony. So that's our card number three. And let's move card number four. We're going to do some with watercolor paper. This is what I need to grab my, um, my pencils real quick. Okay. All right. So we have two sets of watercolor pencils in the catalog. Um, I have both of them and I store them in this stamp case. So this was like one set, this was the other. I cut that right off the boxes. And I keep two blender pens in here just because that's what I generally use with watercolor pencils. Um, but tonight we're gonna use a water pen, which this is my old style, but that's fine. So this one's gonna be real simple and it's actually not using bees. We're gonna use this, um, the leaf stamp. So we've got a basic black card base. So five and a half by eight and a half. And uh, yes, Penny, you're right. Recipients will need to watch the video. I always worry about that with like a fancy fold or something. I'm like, how are they gonna know how they're supposed to open it and display it? So for easel cards, I really only send those to people that are stampers, that are card makers, you know, that know. Cause otherwise it's like, what? I know I gave somebody um, a top fold card once, my, um, somebody in the family. And anyway, um, there was a difficulty opening it. I'm like, they don't all open left to right or right to left, whatever. So I thought that was funny. All right, so basic black. Then we've got um, two pieces of white and they're smaller. So four by five and a quarter. This is for the inside. And then we've got watercolor paper. The watercolor paper, and this is just the Stampin' Up! watercolor paper, but whatever brand watercolor paper you have, doesn't matter. So this is three and a half by four and three quarters. And then this basic white that we're going to layer it onto is three and three quarters by five. So I've got a quarter inch border. Okay. Now, watercolor. So if you don't want to do watercolor pencils, you can use whatever you want. If you want to get this wet and do ink blending on it or um, ink smushing or ink smashing, um, take your ink pad and you could get this wet and then take a clear block and put it right in your ink pad and then like smear it around. You could do that if you want. I'm going to do watercolor pencils and I already forgot. Um, I wrote down what colors I wanted to use. And that doesn't matter. So I want to just color this whole thing as a background. 
I wanted a green. Oh, I know. I wanted pumpkin pie. Yes, pumpkin pie. Um, granny apple green. I think I wanted like crushed curry. Daffodil delight. So this crushed curry looks brown here. Um, you know what? And I just remembered I need to find my pencil sharpener. I had it and I don't know where it's going. All right. I'm going to use these three. The crushed curry too dark. So all I want to do, and it doesn't matter what color, you know, where you put them. I just want to color on here. All right just to make a background and I'm turning my pencil. This is like super easy um, watercolor pencils. And then I'm going to use this yellow until it makes me want to sharpen it. I had the good Stampin' Up! sharpener too. And I really, I don't know what I've done with it. I used to keep it all right here, even though I hardly use these things. All right, and then pumpkin pie. Ooh, I like it. So pencils are good if you're trying to color like detailed stuff and you want watercolor. Actually, I just colored something the other day with them. Oh, this kitty cat from, um, this is from, I forget the name of the set, but it's from the mini and it's got a cat. Uh, so I went through the pencils and then I used a blender pen to activate them and like smooth them out. And then I colored it all with the Winkostella. Well, the Winkostella like reactivated the watercolor pencils and it made my Stella marker like colored. So ugh, we're going to do one color at a time. Okay. So we've got our background and that's all I'm doing with these watercolor pencils. I just wanted color on there just as a different way. All right. I'll deal with them later. I don't want to the lid to come open. All right. Now, um, we need a paper towel that I don't have. I have toilet paper though. This is my nose blowing toilet paper, but it's going to be my, um, color changer. So you want to take either a paintbrush and water or an aqua painter, anything wet. Okay. And we're just going to get this going. Come on. Yep. All right, and we want to just drag these colors out and see how it like smooths out all those lines. And if you want to go over like to the end, you can do that. We can just cover the whole thing. Um, just dab this off and then keep going. I need more water, so I'm going to squeeze a little bit. Whoops. All right, so just a more controlled way to get color. All right, and then green. Now I am going to have to hit this with the heat dryer because now I want to stamp on this. All right, I just want to stamp um, in black ink on this. But I like that effect sometimes with that watercolor business. Okay, super quick. Uh, let's get the heat dryer. Now you could let this air dry, but we don't have time for that. I was going to heat this anyway. Now you see how this curls, the water paper curling? It's because there's so much water on there. But I like that effect. That does look watercolory. All right, that feels dry enough. Uh, then we want our Stamparatus. So all we're gonna do is do some black stamping on this black ink. And let me put that there. The foam is under here, which we don't need. Mm, I like it. All right, and then I wanted this leafy guy, like right there. And put this right here. Oh, 
get that closer. All right, now I am going to stamp with um, my Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. Since this is watercolor paper, it's going to take a... Oh, Di, you're right. Where are my hands? Why don't I keep those handy? They're right here. Plus, that was a whole big card. But you're right. Um, I'm going to use... We're going to have to take a couple swipes at this because it's watercolor paper. Because it's grainy um, and it just doesn't take ink like smoothly. So we have to stamp it um, several times. And I like this Catherine Pooler because it's nice dark black. You could use Memento. Um, I just know for a fact you would have to take it like more tries than this. All right. I need to get more on this edge here. And make it darker, darker, darker. I feel like that one flower that I want is just not getting any darker. Okay. All right. And now this one's going to be simple. Um, we are going to stamp... I need to clean this, so let's do this. Get that out of the way. Whoopsie. Um, I really wanted happy birthday on here, but I'm not going to be able to get that perfectly on there. So, you know what? For now, we're going to leave that greeting off. But what I want you to do when you make your own is put a greeting right over here. So, I just wanted, you know, color. I haven't used watercolor paper in forever. I haven't used these watercolor pencils in forever. Um, but a nice, just simple black and a couple of colors. Oh, and then we're going to use some white dots on that. Because I think that's going to stand out pretty nice. All right, let's get this on here. And the fact that this watercoloring is not perfect, like that you see some white spots up here and throughout here, that's good. All right. Ooh, I like it. Can't you just imagine like just a black reading, like right here, boop. And then we'll add a couple little white dots. Now you can pop this up. Let's pop it up. Pop it up or lay it flat, whatever. All right, and then this was, what, number four. Yep, okay, we've got one more. Um, and I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know it's usually a little bit longer when I have, when I do the workshops, but, you know, I try to stick to an hour. It just doesn't always work. It's too much goodness to share. Okay, let's peel these up. Oh, now next week, I will tell you, um, I haven't done anything for St. Patrick's Day yet because I just didn't have time, um, but I'm going to do some stuff. I've got a little mini album that I want to make because I have pictures printed out from last year, so I'm actually going to put pictures in it and make a little like folio kind of thing, folio mini book for St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to be using... The papers that we got for celebration, the dandy designs, the one that was like the $100 item, um, because there's a lot of them in there. And I like the greens. Uh, I did get the clover stamp set. I did not get it in time to get the punch. But I'm going to be using that. And I'm actually going to make a leprechaun with some older stamps and punches. Um, and maybe a card or two. So a couple little uh, St. Patrick's Day things that you could probably copy with or use whatever you have. All right. Mm, I like it. So again, greeting there. And let's add some, just a couple white dots. Like we're gonna just going to do three on this one. 
I do want a big one. And then I like three sizes. Let's do medium. Yeah, these whites, the white dots really show up. Mmm, I like it. So simple, but, you know, you pick which three colors you want to go to. And if you had a different stamp, like not this flower, it totally changes it. But just the concept of it, right? I like that. Okay. Thanks, Di. Deborah, I wonder if we'll get new watercolor pencils with the color refresh. I would certainly hope so if they, uh, if they do that. I mean, they're definitely doing it. It's just a matter of, of how it will be, right? How many colors will change. Um, okay, so for this one, again, thank goodness, I already stamped and die cut my B. So see how pretty that is with all the, you know, you can see the roughed up and the flowers. So this one is another, a note card. So these come with the envelopes as a set. So it's like a three and a half by five, five by three and a half. Yep. And this is the thick white paper. They come in vanilla and white thick. They do come in craft too, but those are not as thick. All right. Then you're also going to have a piece that I've already embossed. This is with the, I'm calling it basics number one folder. So it's like flower print. Looks like a five petal flower. And this is just going to get glued on here. And that was probably three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Let me double check. Um, oh, no, wait, I went down three sixteenths. Yeah. Yeah. So I will have to, yeah, three and a half minus three sixteenths is three and five sixteenths by four and 13 sixteenths. Oh, you're going to kill me with these measurements, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Um, but you're also going to get a piece of another piece of the thick. So the basic white thick. And that's what I want you to stamp on this and die cut it. So whatever bug you have um, and cut it out. And then you'll also use this to stamp and cut out the greeting. All right. Now I did this on thick because I wanted to color it in with some stamp and blends. And I just want to like color these flowers in real quick. Where's my pen? And then we'll pop it up um, and we'll stamp that happy birthday or, you know, whatever greeting we want. Oh. So I wanted to do like mostly pinks and purples and then um, some green in there because oh. we got to have green for the, the leaves. And I think I was going to use Parakeet Party. So, yep. And I'm just going to actually I'm going to leave the leaves for the end. I'm going to focus on the flowers because um, there's fewer of them. And I wanted a... All right, polished pink. That's what I wanted. Dark and light. Oh, flirty flamingo. Actually, we'll grab that. Flirty flamingo. Where's polished pink? We got sweet sorbet. Real red. Why Ugh. don't I have these labeled? Polished pink. Okay, so let's do a couple. And um, I'm just going to do the dark... And I already stamped this in Memento. All right. I think I said that. So I'm going to get the insides with the dark of these bigger flowers. And then the little bit around. And, oh, I got to do that heart too in the pink because why not? So updating the blog, I'm probably going to not get to this until Friday night or Saturday, just so you know. And that's where I'll have all my measurements too. All right. Dark flirty flamingo. I see another couple little ones. There's so, when you look at this, you're like, oh, there's all kinds of little stuff in here in this B. All right. Let's do that. 
that, and I didn't want to take a whole bunch of time on these. Um, let's do that. These aren't going to get the full treatment. Doing some different. Now I want to bring in some purple. It's going to be whatever purple I grab first. Um, ooh. All right, that was dark, fresh freesia and Highland Heather. Nope. I need to have these labeled better. Blackberry Bliss. Fre Freesia. Okay. I was going to say um, I grabbed Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis. Those aren't going to work. All right. Just because I don't feel like pawing through there. All right. So dark, fresh freesia. I start with the dark. <coughs> I know not everybody does. Um, I think it's all okay. Whatever you want to start with, start with. Uh, I'm just trying to look and see, am I catching all the flowers? I think so. Yeah, there, oh, that's a flower. That's a flower. Mm, maybe that little thing is a flower. All right, now leaves. So let's look at, bring this up closer. So you see here, there's like all these tiny leaves, and then there's all these little dots, dot, 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 dot. So I just want to color the leaves first. Just follow some of the lines. And then add the light. I really like how this is coming together. And then look for, um, oop, let's do some leaves down here. There's just a couple of them. Okay. Now, the dots, I was thinking, oh, I want to pick like a, maybe a fourth color and go over it. But then I changed my mind. I want the lightest green. So a light parakeet party. And I'm just going to dot over all the dots that I can see. Oh, wait, there's some more leaves. So just to like fill it in. Tap, 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 tap. And I guess it wouldn't be much difference if I just flat out colored it. Um, but I like that. And that's, that's all I'm going to do for that guy. Well, that's a lie. I'm going to wink a Stella all over, all over these leaves. And the whole, the whole bee. Because all those pretty colors deserve to be sparkly. All right. And then, and then, so pop this guy up right there with dimensionals that disappeared. Uh, so let's just grab a new one. And again, I would do a greeting just in black. So Minimal colors, mostly black and white. All right. And then we're almost done. I just got to mount this. Oh, okay. Yikes. Ah! I was stuck to my fingernail. Ugh. I just put these on. I didn't want to ruin them. <laughs> All right. Let's do eyeball, eyeball, boop, right there. So greeting, um, I can stamp this. Actually, let me pull this apart a little bit, and I'll just do this real quick. So, again, I'll do my uh, Catherine Pooler Midnight And I'm just going to hand cut these anyway. So stamp it on that basic white thick. And if you had a little punch that you wanted to use, go for it. 
I just like this hand trimming and getting it like pretty close to the words. I don't know why I've been um, on that kick like this last year, probably. I like it. No idea why. I think it's because I've become more um, like if it's not perfect, I'm okay with it. Everything doesn't have to be trimmed on the trimmer perfectly. All right, and these I definitely want to just lay flat. Happy. And you could even leave this with no greeting. Just the B is pretty. Happy birthday. Could have been a hello or buzz, buzz, buzz. All right, so there's our cards for this month's workshop. So we've got our B. Actually, I'm going to get some of this out of the way. So we've got our B note card, and this stamp is dirty, and so I just don't want to knock into that. Um, we've got our watercolor card, and again, that you're going to do whatever colors you want. We've got our... Um, easel card. Mm, 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 mm. Love that. And then we've got our vintage with the mint macaron and the crumb cake. And I know this is running out of room. And then we've got our bright um, floral that we die cut with out of that floral paper. So um, thanks for hanging out, you guys. Uh, I totally did not mean to be uh, an hour and a half. Yikes, Dave's waiting for dinner, and I got to cook tonight. Ew. So, because um, he's sick. All right. Um, next week, St. Patrick's Day ideas, little mini album, some a tag or two, cards or two. Um, and that's that. So I'll update my blog. Uh, if you want the kit, you know, order with the code, and that'll tell me that you want it, and that'll stay open through the 31st. So yeah, that's why I kind of had to wait till the day to create that code because, um, we're only allowed to keep them open for 30 days and then they cut it off. So since there's 31 days in the month, I had to wait, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, Penny hot toddy. If only he drank. Yeah, that might be a good, then I could put a little something in it. Right. So a little night, night juice. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. You guys, I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.